Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you the basics of how to create a map system for your game. This was designed specifically for Metroidvanias in mind, but that does not mean it won't work for other genres. It just has a few design decisions that are best suited to that genre. And we're gonna start by first creating a mini map, and then we're going to expand that into a whole map system. Ready? Let's go. So let me give you a lay of the land here so that we don't lose our bearings. I kept this very simple. We have three scenes and each one of them are just a simple room. Room one has a door that leads to room two, which has doors leading back to room one or forward to room three, which has, you guessed it, a door going back to room two. And I'm not going to explain any of the door or scene transition code because that's way outside the scope of this tutorial. But if you do want to know how that works, you can check out this tutorial here. And before we make our map, it's important to note how our levels line up with each other. You can see they're actually properly connected to each other, and I built the levels that way on purpose. And the way we're designing this particular map system, you're going to need to have your world set up this way. The good news is, though, designing your levels this way makes creating some games, like Metroidvanias for example, far easier because you can actually see the entire area all at once. The rooms are just broken up into chunks or different scenes. So let's start with a minimap first and then we'll expand it. We're gonna create a new camera and parent it to our main camera and let's call it map camera. And you can just go ahead and copy all of your settings from your main camera over to this new one, except let's zoom way out on the Z position. And I'm using a perspective camera, by the way. So if you're using an orthographic camera, then just change the orthographic size instead. And let's go ahead and give it a nice dark gray background. And also let's get rid of the audio listener on the new camera because we only ever want one of those in our scene at a time. Okay, so now what we actually want is for this new camera to not be displaying everything. So first let's set up a new layer called map and select only map in this calling mask on our new camera. We can't see anything anymore, but don't worry, we'll fix that in just a sec. Let's also make sure that our main camera does not show the map layer. So now what we want is to somehow make this map camera project what it's seeing onto an image. And we can do exactly that by using this output texture here. So let's create a new render texture and we'll set it as 1920 by 1080 to ensure that we can use it as a full screen map later on and now assign that. So now our map camera is going to send everything it sees to that render texture. But right now it's not seeing anything except for a blank background. So let's go to our player and create a new game object and let's call it map icon and set its layer to map. Attach a sprite renderer to it and let's make it a blue circle. And if you're using a 2D renderer, then you'll want to use an unlit material here or else you're gonna have to use lights for your icons, which is kind of weird. All right, great. Now let's actually get that render texture displaying as a mini map. So I'm not going to get into persistent data in this video. My last two tutorials both talk about it, so you can check those out if you're not sure what I mean. But in this project, I'm using a prefab of objects that I want to persist throughout all scenes, and they stay in the don't destroy on load scene. So in that prefab, I'm going to create a new canvas. I'm gonna set it to scale with screen size and set it to 1920 by 1080. And as a child, I'm going to add a raw image. You cannot use a normal image for a render texture. It has to be raw. Let's set the pivot and the position to be the bottom right. And I'll scooch it over just a little bit. And now go ahead and plug in the map render texture in there. So I'm gonna make the width 400 and the aspect ratio should match our render texture. So I'm gonna take 400 divided by 1.7777, which is the ratio for 1920 by 1080, by the way. And you'll notice that the background of my camera is transparent, so you can just barely see the blue dot on my screen right now. I'm not entirely sure why, but I had to enable post-processing on my new camera in order to get the background color that we set on the new camera correctly displaying to the raw image. All right, there we go. Now let's test it out. Okay, great. We have this tiny blue dot moving around when our player moves around. It really doesn't look like much of a map right now though. So what I'm going to do is use a tile map to actually fill in the shape of our rooms that will be displayed on our map. Okay. And if you're following along just for this next part here, do not follow along because we're going to end up getting rid of it. And I just want to show how this works first. So I'm going to create a new tile map and change its layer to just the map layer. And I actually just have this white tile here. It's literally just a one pixel white tile that I brought in and turned into a tile. So if we take that and use it to color in the whole inside of our room, you can see if we play that we now have a nice outline for our room displaying on the minimap. 
And this is awesome because we don't need to worry about math or anything because it's literally shaped around the size of our room itself. And you can see the player blipping out of existence every once in a while. And that's because our player map icon and the room itself are conflicting because they're on the same sorting layer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set my player's sorting layer to 10. But the problem is right now, as soon as I leave this first room, the mini map goes blank again, right? And we want a full map system here. So we want all the rooms to be displaying. So this is not going to work. What we want to do instead is to be building these tile maps onto something that will remain persistent in all of our scenes. So if you're following along, go ahead and follow along again. So let's create a new rectangular tile map called Map Room Container. And again, I'm putting this inside my persistent prefab and where you're going to put it in your project is going to depend on how you handle persistent data in your game. This can be called Room 1 and I'm going to duplicate it for Room 2 and again for Room 3. And again, let's make sure that all of this is on the map layer and that we're using unlit materials for all of them. So I'm gonna open up all three scenes at once and in room one, I'll trace the inside of room one. And in room two, I'm gonna trace room two and in room three, you get the picture, right? Great, so now when we play, you can see that all three rooms are displaying and as we travel around, it's updating properly. Now for a more Metroidvania friendly design, I don't want all of them to be showing, right? I want to keep track of whichever ones that we've already uncovered and only display those ones keeping the rest hidden. So we're going to create two scripts and one is called Map Room Manager and the other one called Map Container Data. And let's do Map Container Data first because it's so easy. So we're going to create a public string called room scene and a bool for whether or not the room has already been revealed. And that is it. Except I have an optional upgrade to this. You do not have to use it, but I find it too awesome not to show you. And it's already been in my last two tutorials. That is how much I like it. Here's the code. I'm not going to go through it in any kind of detail, but what this will do is return a string for the name of the scene except it also allows us to drag and drop scenes into the inspector directly, which I love because I really despise using strings in the inspector and I try to avoid it at all costs. This is not my code. I found it in a forum online and I'll post a link to that in the description if you want more details, okay? But now that you've got that, again, this is optional. You can leave this if you want, but I'm going to change this to scene field. Now let's attach that script onto each individual room within the map room container and drag in the scene it applies to if you're using the scene field option or type it in if you're using the string option. Now for the map room manager. First, we are going to make it a singleton so that we can call the methods easily and we're only ever gonna have one of these anyways. And let's set up an array of map container data and get those in awake. And be sure to enter true as a parameter so it can find map container data even on inactive game objects. And we only need one method here, which is to reveal the new room. So let's first get the name of the active scene and we'll need the scene management namespace at the top for that. And then we're gonna iterate through all the rooms. And if the name of the scene is equal to the name of our currently active scene and the room hasn't already been revealed, then show the room and set the has been revealed flag to true, and then return to drop out of this for loop because we don't need to continue after that point. Let's go ahead and set all of these rooms to inactive and attach the map room manager script to the parent game object. Now, since each room is tied to a scene, I'm just gonna go ahead and call the reveal new room function whenever we load a new scene. I already have that functionality built into a script that I have which handles loading new scenes whenever we open a door, the only important thing you need to know from this script is the scene loaded delegate. And this functionality is built right into the scene manager and we can subscribe a method to that delegate in on enable. And let's ensure that we unsubscribe from it on the on disable method. And the actual method must take a scene and load scene mode parameter to function correctly. So once you have that set up, this function is going to be called every single time a new scene gets loaded. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call our reveal new room after all this other functionality that's really not important for this tutorial. Okay, let's test. So we start and only one room is visible and now so is the second and now all of them, awesome. Okay, so now I'd like to give the player the ability to open a larger map as well. So under my managers object here, I'm going to create a map manager 
and create a new script with the same name and attach it and open it up. And let's make this one a singleton as well. And when we open the large map, we obviously don't want the minimap open anymore. So let's get a reference to both the minimap and the large map. And let's set up a bool to track when it's open and when it's not. So I'm gonna check my input to see if my map button was pressed and I just mapped it to the M key. And if the large map is not open, then we'll open the large map. Otherwise, we'll close it. So let's make an open large map and a close large map function. And we're just gonna deactivate the minimap and activate the large map and set this to true here and vice versa for the close map. And let's make sure we close the large map when the game starts. Very, very simple stuff. Now we'll need a different raw image to display the large map too. So let's create a new one under map canvases and we'll keep this one centered and just set it to 1920 by 1080 and make it slightly transparent. Let's assign our inspector objects for the map manager and let's test. And there you go, you can swap between a minimap and a large map. They're both based on the same render texture, so they're both gonna display the exact same thing. And there's lots that you could do to customize this, and it could definitely, definitely be prettier. You don't even have to use the tile map to create the map either. You could use sprites instead. You would just have to do a little bit of trial and error to make sure that your sprite graphic lines up with the shape of the room. What I really like about using tile maps for this is because of how easy it is to change if you decide to change your level layouts later on. But I hope that this has given you enough of a base to get started making your map system. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Do you have a different way of approaching the creation of your maps? Let me know. And if you want access to this project and the source files, my patrons get access to the files for every tutorial ever made on this channel. So if that's something that interests you, then head on over to Patreon. Thanks for watching. I want to give a very special thank you to all of our Hall of Fame patrons, Jakob Yondok, Christopher Nichols, Zondra Kessler, Fontaine Wade, Brainwaves to Binary, Couch, KB at Bird Tech Games, and Ian Oral, as well as our Early Access patrons, Ken Waite, Mason Crow, Mr. D, Yon, Liquid Egg, Alexander Prestes, Jude Greaves, Felipe Gomez Dos Santos, Ober, Francesco Latamata, Bill Guo, Alone on Mars, Kojutsu, Ayash Sharma, Alex Friedman, Arne Nesh Shonaveg, Neil, Ben Kerberger, John Wisman, Danny Rathliff, and Lucky Tales. If you choose to support us on Patreon, you can get early access to all of our YouTube videos, monthly alpha builds, and more.